Okay, this is your brand new Acer Chromebook. And I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks after you log into it that hopefully you will be able to use and make this device a little bit more useful this school year. So after you've turned it on and you've logged in, you will realize really quickly that your touchpad is a good size touchpad. It uses just one finger to move the cursor on your screen. And in order to click, you can just tap it or you can actually physically press down and it has a little click to the pad itself. So I just clicked on a Chrome browser to open up Google. If we wanted to drag and drop something, so if you can see in my tabs up top, I'm gonna click a brand new tab. If I wanted to grab that tab and drag it, I'm going to click and then actually drag. And I like to do this, you can do it with one finger, but I like to do it with two. So I like to actually click with one finger and then take a second finger on the same pad as you can see I'm doing here and then move something with it. I know other people like to go ahead and actually click maybe with your left hand on what it is that you want to click and drag. So press down with one finger from your left hand and then drag it with one finger from your right hand. So that's click and drag. In order to right click with a Chromebook, you can do it a couple different ways. The first way is just a two finger touch. So if you're trying to right click on something, you just tap your mouse pad with two fingers and then your menu comes up. You can also achieve this with pressing one of the two alt buttons. You can kind of see that we have two, one to the left of the space bar and one to the right. Either one of them, if you go ahead and press it and then click, if I press that one and click, you'll see that that right click menu will appear. In order to scroll, let's find a page that we can go to where we scroll. So. If I look up West Hill Central School District, you'll see many different things come up. And if I wanted to scroll the page, obviously you could go over to the bar that's on the side. And sometimes with Chromebooks, it does disappear, but I found it right here on the right-hand side. We could grab that, but a easier way to do this is to take two fingers and actually move it in the direction you want to go. So if you want to scroll down, I'm taking two fingers and I'm scrolling down. If I wanna scroll up, I take two fingers and scroll up. I can also go backwards or forwards. So if I move these two fingers going to the left, it'll take me back to the page I was just at, which was Google. If I move them to the right, it'll take me back forward to the page I was just at. So two fingers left, two fingers right will move you forward and backward. Two fingers up, we'll scroll the page up. Two fingers down, we'll scroll the page down. So that's scrolling with fingers. If you'd like to see all the windows that you have open, you could take three fingers and just move them in an upward fashion. You can see I have one window here, and then you should be able to see that I have multiple desktops that are here. So this could be useful and they can be renamed. Maybe you have a different desktop with different websites for each subject. So you could have one called math, you could have another desktop called English. You could have a new one, if that's what you wanted to do, called Science and so on and so forth. And then each desktop could contain whatever it is that you're working on, different web pages. So you don't have to have all these tabs in just one place. If you wanna get back to those desktops or those windows, just take those three fingers and scroll up and you'll see your desktops there and you're gonna be able to change between them. Another cool thing, if we have multiple tabs with three fingers that you can do is if you take the three fingers and move them to the left or right, slowly it will move within the tabs that you have. So even if your cursor's down here and I move my hand in three, I should say three fingers, going to the left and now to the right, I'm moving from one tab to the next. If you wanna close a tab, this is a little redundant because everybody just clicks on the X, but if you take three fingers and you're hovered over this tab and you just tap on it, it will close it. So a three finger tap over the actual tab itself is the same thing as clicking the X.
If I minimize this, one more thing that I'll show you, this is our shelf that's here. And if you click on your home screen with two fingers, you'll see that we can auto hide the shelf. So that means if I open up this web page, you'll see it go down and it is hidden. And I have to use my cursor to go back over it or try to get all the way, I move that cursor all the way down to the bottom of the screen. And then it will show up. So that's when it auto hides. It won't auto hide on the main screen, but if I don't wanna auto hide it, I just tap the main screen with two fingers and this menu shows up and I wanna always show the shelf. The other thing you can do is you can set your shelf position. So if you don't like it on the bottom, you can move it to the left and now it's on the left-hand side. You could also move it to the right. I'm partial for it being on the bottom and I'm used to that, so that's where I'm going to keep that. Let's go into some keyboard shortcuts now. If you're looking to take a screenshot of the entire screen, you're going to press the control button and then the show all windows button. And that button, that show all windows button, just above the six, it looks like a rectangle with two lines to the right of it. So just above the six. So we're going to click control and the show all windows button, and it has now taken a screenshot and copied it to our clipboard. If we just wanted to take a screen snip of something, I'm gonna delete that one, I would hold down control and shift at the same time, and then hit that same button, that show all windows button. And this is where we can drag an area that we want to capture a picture of. Once we have it drawn the way that we want, we can click capture and that will save as well. You can also achieve this by going to the menu that is in the bottom right hand corner, clicking it, and you should have a button here that says screen capture. So if you click that, that's when the screen capture will come up and you'll be able to manipulate this the same way that you would any drawing. You can move this box to encompass any picture or piece of the page that you wanna capture. Just hit that capture button once you like what you've surrounded and it will copy it to your clipboard. To turn on caps lock. So yes, we can hold down the shift key if we want to go ahead and type out something in capital letters. But other than holding down the shift key, everything is lowercase. How can we lock so that we have capital letters? Well, in order to do this, you're gonna hold down the Alt button and then click the search button. And so when I do that, you'll see down here that caps lock is on. And so if I started typing some letters, you'll see they are all capital letters. To turn it off, it's the same exact move. You're gonna hold down Alt and then click the magnifying glass or the search button, and you have now turned it off. And they are all lowercase letters. To lock your screen, you're going to press the lock button in the top right corner and you can hold that down to lock it or you can go ahead and press the search button and then the letter L. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna lock myself out of this computer right now, but those are the two ways that you can do that and secure your Chromebook so that nobody goes onto it as you. To sign out completely from your Chromebook, I know this is your personal device, but if you wanted to sign completely out, you can do this with the shortcut of holding down shift and control and then pressing the button Q or the letter Q two times. So holding down shift control and pressing Q twice will sign you completely out of your Chromebook. Very nice to use if you're using someone else's Chromebook for whatever reason. A couple other quick shortcuts to copy and paste. If I just put some letters on here and highlight it to copy it, you just Go ahead and press Control C, and that's going to copy it. So if I deleted it and I wanted now to paste it, I would then press Control V. And it will paste it anything that I have copied. And last, these are not all of the shortcuts that you can see, but there is a keyboard helper. So if you press Control Alt, so the two buttons that are down here in the lower left, and press with Control-Alt the 
backslash button or the question mark button that is here, that is just to the left of the shift key, you'll see all types of shortcuts come up. So maybe it's not something that I showed you, but you'll see a bunch of different shortcuts show up that you can go ahead and take the time to explore. Okay, how do we do split screen? Well, a couple different ways to do this as well. Um, one that I like to do is just grab my tab and drag it. So going back to that trick at the beginning, I'm just taking it and I'm dragging it to one side. And I want my cursor to go all the way either to the left or right, and you'll see kind of an outline on your screen happen. And so that tab or that web page now takes up perfect half screen that I have here on my computer. If I want to drag the rest of my tabs, to the other half of the screen, I'm just going to take them and drag the entire bar all the way to the right, and I can kind of see that it takes up the other half of my screen. Separate way to do this, if you had these maximized, let's go ahead and maximize this one as well, is to use the three finger trick. If you take those three fingers and go up, you can see that you have multiple windows open here. I'm gonna just take the one that I have here and drag it over to the right. And now if I just click that other one, it will fill the other half of the screen automatically. All right, if we needed to magnify into any of these web pages because maybe it's just too small for us to see and we want the font to be bigger, you can hold down control and then the minus sign or the dash that's just to the right of the zero. And that will zoom out and you can see that all of a sudden a magnifying glass shows up in our browser, if you can see that. If we want it to get bigger, we're gonna hit the plus button. And so we can zoom way in or zoom way out. You'll also see that there is a reset button here. So if I go ahead and hover over or click on the zoom magnifying glass, I can see what percent I'm zoomed in or out at I can do it with the plus and minus that is here also, or I can just hit reset and it will take us back to the normal 100% of zoom. So what's great about these Chromebooks is they come with their own built-in stylus. And that stylus is in the bottom left-hand corner. You just take a little fingernail to be able to pull that out. And you wanna make sure you put it in and out the correct way, or else it's gonna to be tough to get. But we can use a stylus with a lot of different programs. I know Cami, Jamboard, Google Keep, these are all different places where we can use a stylus. And you can also see, if I pull up a web page here, that in the bottom right-hand corner, this is where we can use the stylus in multiple ways. We can use it as a screen capture tool. We can create a note in Google Keep. We can use it as a laser pointer. So if we're trying to present something, you can see the red that follows my pen as I move it on the screen. We can also go ahead and use it as a magnifying glass. So if we didn't want to use the plus or minus to zoom in, we could just use it to show or see what is on the screen, especially when it comes to the small icons up top. If we click again, it goes back to a pen. Now that doesn't mean that you can just write on the web page right here, but there are some different tools that we use such as Google Keep, Cami, and Jamboard, where we are able to go ahead and write. So if I go ahead and let's go to Google Keep, you can see that if I want to take a note, I can click on the pen tool that is there and it will take me directly to my notes. And this is where I can change colors, I can change the thickness of the line that I'm using. And anything that I draw on this page is automatically saved into the notes that I have in Google Keep. We can use the highlight tool as well. This stylus tool can be used on Jamboard, Cami, Google Keep, and anything else where you are able to go ahead and actually write. If you're able to do it with your finger, you're able to do it with your stylus. Last thing that I'm gonna go over is in the bottom right-hand corner. Bottom right-hand corner, right where your time and battery power is, if you click, you're going to see a menu that pops up. Some notifications sometimes are here, so you can just X out of those if you don't want it. You'll see that you can sign out, you can turn your power off, you can lock your screen from here. You can go to settings, which we will here in just a bit.
You can collapse the menu and minimize it so it's smaller and just the icons or make it bigger. And then this is where your Wi-Fi is. If we clicked on it, right now I'm connected to my phone Wi-Fi, but if I needed to connect to a Wi-Fi, I could go ahead and click from the list that is here. So if you need to get to Wi-Fi, click on here, and you're going to be able to go and choose the Wi-Fi that you need to get to. Bluetooth, this is where anything that is Bluetooth uh, paired will show up. So if you need to pair something, maybe it's a pair of... Uh, AirPods, you would click the button on the back of the AirPods and then hopefully they would show up on this list and then you would be able to select them and use them with your Chromebook. If I click again in that same spot, your notifications that what we saw at the top here, you can turn those on or off whether you want to be disturbed or not. And you can also choose what notifications you'd like to receive. If I go back, our screen, our screen capture tool is here again. The night light, basically that is just ambient light. So if you're having trouble with the brightness of the screen and you don't like the way it's affecting your eyes, you can click that and it will change your screen. Let's go back. Can turn that off so our screen brightens back up and I think I had one more the keyboard here this is where you can change it to a different keyboard and we'll go into settings to kind of show where those keyboards are at I did that a little fast let me go back if you click on the settings icon so the cog that is here this takes us to a screen that has a lot of different things that we can choose from on the left hand side several of them had icons that i just showed you uh, but you'll be able to see your wi-fi your bluetooth the connected devices that you have the accounts uh, that are signed into the chromebook and then if you need to find anything dealing with the touchpad or the keyboard, stylus, the displays that you have here, um, your storage management and power, this is all here under device. You have some personalization things that you can do with wallpaper um, or changing your account image that goes with Google. Your search engine is here and it is Google. And then your security and privacy piece is here along with apps at the bottom. I'm sure I missed something, but hopefully this will get you started using your Chromebook to its maximum potential for the school year. And if you ever need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out.